And we'll start with our first case here. Uh, these are cases we're reviewing today are actually bread and butter cases that are uh, out of our clinic. Uh, so these are real patients that we've taken care of where a CT angiography has been helpful in the diagnosis. This first case is a 64-year-old male who has a history of a prior thoracotomy due to a lung mass that turned out to be valley fever. He lives here in Arizona. And on the 3D visualization, you can actually see that there's some deformity here of his rib where it's thinned out where they had access to the lateral chest wall. And uh, he presents to the emergency smoking and a family history of heart disease, but came in with some atypical left lateral wall chest pain. His cardiac enzymes were unremarkable and his EKG was negative. And uh, he was in the decision tree as to whether to admit the patient or to discharge him for outpatient follow-up. A uh, decision was made to perform cardiac CT angiography in the emergency room. And this is his study uh, that was done in the ER. I'm going to start out in our case review and go to uh, a, a MIP. And this is a 5 millimeter slap thickness. And as we uh, pan back and forth, and the screen might be a little bit jumpy uh, because of the uh, webinar transmission. But one of the things I wanted to point out, if you look here, you've got the diaphragm. And this is actually the stomach. And this patient has a large hiatal hernia that's bulging through the diaphragm. And uh, beyond the uh, history of his lateral uh, chest wall surgery in the past, another potential source of chest pain in these patients is uh, gastroesophageal reflux and uh, a hiatal hernia causing chest pain. You may notice that uh, there are some clips here, some metal clips that are showing up. Uh, up here in the left uh, mediastinum. Uh, again, these are residuals from his prior surgery. Why don't we move forward now and start looking at the coronary arteries. And in this uh, anterior view of the chest, we can bring the heart into view. Here we've got the left ventricle, the aortic valve in the closed position. And now we can see the very beginning of the coronary tree. And this here, uh, where the arrow is, is the left main. And so I'm going to zoom in on the left main. The left main looks uh, relatively free of significant disease. I'm now going to move to an axial view or a foot view. And now we can see the left main extending into some of the branch vessels. And the first branch vessel that extends this way is the left anterior descending artery. And we can immediately appreciate the presence of some uh, disease here. There's some calcified plaque in the proximal left anterior descending artery. We can rotate around that. We can also see the presence of some lower density non-calcified plaque. So there's some mixed density plaque here in the left anterior descending artery. And the vessel is somewhat what we call positive remodeling. It's swollen a little bit. Um, if we look at the diameter stenosis, however, perhaps in this section here versus this section here, we can see that the lumen itself is not severely compromised. So there appears to be a moderate narrowing of the lumen of dimensions, even though we do have some plaque here in the proximal left anterior descending artery. Let's now turn our attention to the more distal vessel. We can see some branching diagonal branches here. And we can actually roll out the vessel and look at the more distal LAD and diagonal branches. And we really don't see any significant disease uh, out further on this vessel. So even though we do have disease here, this does not appear to be a lesion that's likely causing the patient's symptoms. Here we have the left atrial appendage. And this other branch here is the circumflex branch going around to the side of the heart. And as we roll that out, we immediately see uh, some other significant disease here. And we have two sequential lesions here in the circumflex. And these look much more significant. This particular plaque has a low density area that surrounds what appears to be possibly some contrast. So it's hard to say if that's a ruptured plaque or an ulcer. It may be some calcium that's just a lower density. Uh, but the true lumen is this region right here compared to the uh, lumen in the more normal vessel just before and after it. So there does appear to be a severe stenosis. And just beyond that, the lumen actually appears to almost disappear completely. We've got some specks of calcium here. Very hard to appreciate whether there might be a little string of contrast before the vessel finally reconstitutes. So we have two very severe stenoses here in the proximal circumflex, which then as we roll out gives a rise to a very large 
obtuse marginal branch. And so this is a very concerning uh, lesion here for uh, what could be an acute coronary syndrome in this patient. Let's finish up by looking at the right coronary. And to do that, I'm going to go uh, start out here in this anterior view. And then I'm going to rotate the heart. And again, we can see this circumferential vessel here that we just described. And now here we can see the beginning of the right coronary. And the right coronary uh, extends here around the heart. This is the right ventricle and looks like a pretty reasonable vessel. There may be some mild plaque in this area that's not obstructive and non-calcified. As we get down further into this corner, the there's some blurring artifact. And unfortunately, this is an area of the right coronary that probably moves uh, with the heartbeat more than any other area. And we do have some motion artifact in this area, which makes this particular segment non-diagnostic or uninterpretable. And it's possible that if we had done some other reconstructions and looked at this area, that uh, we may find this to be a, a normal vessel, be able to visualize this segment. But the, in this particular reconstruction, we really can't say whether there's additional disease here. We move further down and we look down at this distal vessel. Uh, I think uh, the motion there is not as much of a problem. And we can see the posterior descending artery extending down here in the inferior septal wall. So the distal right coronary looks uh, pretty free of disease. Again, I'd like to point out this uh, large hiatal hernia here. This is the stomach bulging up. Uh, this is the aorta and the thoracic spine. So again, another potential source of chest pain. However, in this particular patient, uh, the circumflex vessel uh, certainly appears to be a cause of the patient's symptoms. And regardless of whether we can interpret this distal right coronary, this patient needed to be admitted to the hospital and undergo uh, a coronary angiogram. OK, well, let's, yeah, let's move on to the next case. Uh, this is a 64-year-old a lady. Uh, who had uh, previous anginal symptoms and had a heart catheterization done, had significant three-vessel disease, and approximately nine months ago underwent coronary bypass surgery. She did well postoperatively and then went through cardiac, three months of cardiac rehab. And now for the last few months, she's presenting with recurrent symptoms of sort of some atypical chest burning. And in this patient, cardiac CT angiography was done to uh, look at the patency of her newly placed bypass grafts. And I think you'll find that this particular technique is very well suited to uh, looking at graft patency. And uh, you know, it's, click, it's, it's very quickly and easily determined whether there's a problem with the grafts. It's very rare to have uh, early graft failure. And that's why CT may be preferable to just going straight back to the cath lab again. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this case. Uh, when we start, we're here in our 3D mode, and I'm actually going to go into a, a slab mode here so we can continue to look at stuff in 3D before I go into the, uh, the more raw data set. And so I'm just shrinking away the, the sternum here a little bit. And you can immediately uh, appreciate underneath the uh, ribs here that there appears to be several uh, grafts that are patent. You can see this graft here coming up from underneath the ribs and extending up to the subclavian artery. And this is the internal mammary artery graft. And there's some metal clips there. And you can see that that's plugging into the LAD. And you've got an LAD vessel now extending to the apex of the heart. So we know that graft is open. And we've got another graft here that's coming around and going to the lateral wall of the heart. And if we follow this vein graft over here, we can see that that's plugging in here into uh, what appears to be a circumflex vessel. And that graft appears to be open. And we have another graft here that goes to the bottom wall of the heart. And this is a vein graft that's going to the right coronary. And uh, one of the things that you may be able to appreciate is there's an area here that's a suspicious looking in this mid graft. Uh, that goes to the right coronary where there may be a narrowing. So we're going to want to look at that uh, in more detail. So this is a this is a newly placed vein graft and it's going to the uh, inferior wall of the heart. And we can actually follow that down and, and see the very last bit of that extending to the posterior descending artery. 
So now let's uh, go back to our enter view, and I'm going to go into uh, MIP mode again, and I like to read with a five millimeter slice thickness. And we'll start by looking not at the graphs, but at the native coronary arteries, and then we'll get to those graphs again in a minute. Again, I apologize if things are jumping a little bit here on the webinar. So what I've done here initially is I'm bringing the left main into view. Here's the left ventricle, the aortic valve, and then the proximal left main. There is evidence of some non-calcified plaque in the left main, but it does not appear to be obstructive. And then if I center over that and go into the foot or the axial view, we can lay out the left anterior descending artery, which is right here. And what you'll appreciate is that there's really no contrast. Uh, it abruptly starts right here with this calcification, and I don't see any contrast in the LAD. So this native LAD looks like it's completely occluded in the proximal segment. And I'm just going to walk out this a little bit further, and I am seeing something that has contrast in it right here. And as it turns out, that's our mammary artery graft. And we continue to follow that, and I'm just opening that up for you a little bit. But you can see this internal mammary graft coming underneath the ribs, and that's plugging in very nicely here into the left anterior descending vessel. And there's the rest of the LAD. We saw this in the 3D view. And I do want to point out, though, that there's a suspicious area right here. It's beyond the graft insertion site where there appears to be at least a moderate stenosis in the LAD beyond where the graft plugs in. So this may be an area of potential uh, disease that was not fixed by the bypass operation when they plug that in. Uh, now over here, we've got this other vein graft going to the circumflex, but I'm going to go back into the foot or axial view, get back to this bifurcation of the LAD and the circumflex, and let's go look at the native circumflex first. And you can see there's some, some spotty calcification as well as some uh, low density non-calcified plaque that's non-obstructive in the proximal vessel. And then we get into some calcified plaque here in the mid-vessel and what looks like more narrowing here, probably a more severe narrowing. And then as we get down further, <clears throat> we see a branch, the obtuse marginal branch, and we see the same thing we saw there in the LAD. There's no contrast here anymore. And then you do see some contrast filling distally, but that's because we've got this vein graft. And if we come in and focus on the vein graft and we follow the root of that vein graft out, we can see that that plugs into this obtuse marginal branch. So the graft is patent, but again, we see some concerning area right here, right at the anastomosis of the vein graft and the obtuse marginal branch, which appears to have some distal plaque here that may be obstructive. But it looks like right at the anastomosis, there's possibly a high-grade stenosis where we're losing that contrast column, almost disappears in a very discrete area where we may have a significant stenosis in the obtuse marginal branch there in the lateral wall, even though the graft itself, we follow it all the way back to the aorta. There's no problems with either of these grafts. It's in the distal vessel. And finally, let's go look at that vein graft. Uh, well, let's look at the native right coronary. Let me see if I can get us into a little better orientation. And I'll find the uh, very beginning of the native right coronary, right about here. So here's the ostium of the native right coronary. And what happens is after you follow this vessel down, you can see it becomes very ratty, very narrow. There's mixed density plaque. And then in this area here, the vessel pretty much disappears. So again, the native vessel severely diseased, probably occluded, uh, and then there's some reconstitution of the vessel when we get down distal here. And this is where this uh, vein graft is plugged in down here in the posterior descending artery. And this vessel also has some severe disease just beyond the graft insertion site. Uh, so there's distal disease in all three vessels, but 
we're also concerned about the graft itself. And let me just see if I can find that spot we were looking at. And here it is here. When we were looking at this in 3D, we appreciated that the graft itself may have a narrowing. And I think that it's easy to appreciate that right here, that there's a severe stenosis in this native vein graft to the right coronary that's occurred just within months of having the surgery. Maybe a, a clamp or something caused some trauma to that vein graft and uh, created this uh, lesion, which is very unusual in a patient who's just had coronary bypass surgery. And we'll just finish by, uh, again, panning down to the, the bottom of the heart here. And uh, we'll look at that vein graft. And here's that distal vessel. Here's the posterior descending artery extending to the inferior septum. And again, some severe stenoses here beyond the vein graft insertion site. So we've got disease in the graft itself. and disease in the native vessel. So we've got a really unfortunate lady here who's just had open heart surgery and she's got a lesion in the LAD beyond a patent left internal mammary graft. She's got a severe anastomosis lesion in a vein graft going to an obtuse marginal and then she's got a high grade stenosis in the vein graft going to the right coronary with distal disease in that vessel as well. So. Uh, another example of the utility of the test, this patient also ended up needing an angiogram and uh, went on to have stenting of both the vein graft uh, to the right corner as well as the distal vessel.